Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry version 12. This is actually our Curse of Strahd and I'm a liar. <laughs> Not intentionally. So we've been doing a lot of looking at automations and things like that. Um, and my Curse of Strahd game is underway. They're as far as the Death House. You can see this is where we left it last session, just at the top of the stairs. Um, but looking at a lot of those automations and stuff, some of it is just so cool. Um, now, not necessarily fully automating stuff, but things like in the last session we had our druid using the torch add-on, um, lit a torch so they could see their way around the house. They've not lit any, lit any of the available lamps, um, but they have the one torch in the party going around, and it's like, hang on a minute... Chris's pre-made torch is so... Uh, sorry, Gambit's... I do apologise. Gambit's torch is so nice that I've swapped that out. And this character's now got that torch going. Uh, because it is, it's just so easy to use. You just click on torch and say light it. Or click on torch and say extinguish. Um, and it's got a nice graphic and everything works beautifully. So I've ditched that module, um, the torch module, because this works better. But we've also been looking at things like um, hiding, advantage, disadvantage, um, flanking and things. And they're all bits that I like to use. So it's like, well, hang on a minute. Why don't I bring that in? My players are still manually, not manually, my players are still clicking to roll their own dice and everything. I'm not automating those stuff, but I am going to incorporate those automations we've been looking at in the in the automation series into here. So rather than me just doing that, I'll show you the process. Okay, so I have already in my other game world, so a few things we need to do. First of all, we need to make sure we configure our MIDI QOL settings. Now, we're going to go into our workflow. I'm going to go into my miscellaneous and import my MIDI QOL, and I've already done it, but I'm going to import my MIDI QOL set settings from my automation world. So in that world, I went to export, and then in this world, I've imported, so it copies them all across perfectly. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to my settings, so my MIDI QOL JSON file, that if you wanted to completely replicate my settings, you can do that. One caveat, what am I on right now? Um, MIDI QOL, I am currently on 11.6.9. Uh, so it will import those settings directly for you if, again, if you want to use those. So when it comes to mechanics, I've got my incapacitated and my bleeding stuff on. When it comes to rules, I've got flanking on. I've got the hidden advantage when you're hidden things. I have not got the firing into um, into melee at a disadvantage. Um, in the previous video, I kind of left it as a question of how you want to do. Now, Drazimo did reply and say, well, he's definitely not using it, but if it's a particularly tight situation as the DM, he might impose um, cover for them. And that makes sense. So I think I'm going to go that way unless you guys convince me otherwise in the comments of that video. Um, that no, it does not impose disadvantage because you're shooting in with everybody else, unless it gets particularly crowded, in which case I'll just be telling them that they're at disadvantage. Um, we have got a ranger, a bow ranger in this party, and it's weak enough as a build anyway, um, and then imposing disadvantage on everything except the first shot. <laughs> that's that's prob probably a little bit mean, and it might actually make the game less fun for them. So, MIDI QOL, QOL, set, QOL settings. Blimey, got my, put my teeth in. Um, yeah, you can import those if you wish to copy mine. You absolutely can. So into my new world. Oh, hold up. Golem editor here. If you are going to import my MIDI QOL settings, make sure before you do, you export your current settings and keep them safe. So if something goes wrong, you can just re-import your own settings back and you'll be cushy. Right. <laughs> Don't blame me if it goes hideously wrong. Anyway, on with the video. What I also need to do into a new world is check I'm going through Chris's pre-mades and that I've got the correct options here um, that replicate what I've got in the other one. Now, what I have done in here is um, 
with the hidden hidden compendiums, I've hidden a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to be using very often. Um, just just bits that are kind of in my way. So my compendium list actually over on the right hand side here. Uh, there's a couple more that will disappear when I restart because you have to restart for that to take effect. Restart the game world, not restart your PC. Just make that clear. Um, and that will uh, that will tidy that up a little bit more so that um, we don't need to worry too much about it, which is good. So go through your CPR settings, make sure you're happy with that. I've hidden some folders, I've hidden some compendiums um, and bits like that. Game mechanic options, I've reset these how I like them. Obviously they're whizzing through on the screen quite quickly, but you can pause and have a look at my settings if you are interested. Um, also, of course, you need to go through Gambit's Again, if you're using that, the general settings, what you want on um, or not, uh, what spells you may want enabled. Now, we, I've not really looked at counter spell and silvery barbs. My players are first level, that's not, and they're not using silvery barbs. So I haven't really tested that yet, um, but I have put these extra bits on as well. And generic features, yes, opportunities, attack. Nobody's running with Sentinel, but I've included that on as well. So you would need to, again, only if you want to exactly replicate my setup, do that. Um, now, bearing in mind for my setup, the DM roles are automated. You just click through. Players are not. So you might import my settings and then tweak them to your flavor. Or, or don't. <laughs> so that's up to you. Um, now, the other thing that we've got, of course, is um, I have got is I've now got 43 modules active in this. I have got my CG automated items that I've bought in. So these are the ones that I have been testing in the automation world that I know were really work quite nicely. So I've got that. I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can download that folder of things that we know work if you want to so they're tried and tested um, in a combat scenario uh, a couple of them that i've had to tweak myself to make sure that they work but most of them are literally are oh, right gambits one i'm just going to copy it into there now if you do choose to download that just bear in mind it will probably download a folder called cg automation items and then a whole bunch of gump over after it just delete the GUMPF from the folder, so it's just CG Automation Items. And where are you going to put that? You find your Foundry folder, your Data folder, your Modules folder, and you dump it in there. So it should look like, if I can do the alphabet, uh, it should like look like that. CG Automation Items. Uh, and if you dump that in there, when you restart Foundry and you come into your world, it will appear in your module list as an option like this. And you just go tick thank you very much uh, and that should give you when you come into the game it should give you this compendium which has got a whole bunch obviously not remotely exhaustive so yet i'm going to keep working on it um but some barbarian traits the cleric bits that work the fighter bits that work we've got a couple of bits of equipment thieves tools working as well as Again, these are just purely dragged from gambits, but it was a way of me organising to make sure I know that these bits are working the way I want. Polar Master Archery, the breath weapon for the gold dragon. Uh, and of course, what you may find is that your animations don't work because I've used um, a JB2A patron version of an animation. So you may need to, to tweak for you. I would suggest you clone this for yourself. Um, you may need to tweak them. To do that, you're going to need to unlock the compendium. Right click, toggle lock, and it will ask you if you want to unlock it. And then you can edit these. Otherwise, you can't. You can just import them. But of course, you can import them and then make any additions or changes that you need to make. Chances are, yeah, you may need to change the animation because I've used the Patreon version and you don't have that. Um, or you find it's not automating because I've set up in my in the automated animations so in just to make sure this is clear automated animations i may have set something up in here and i think there's certainly on the templates a couple thunder wave i set that up so you might find you don't get the graphic working because you haven't got automated animations set up you can go away and do that of course but quite a lot of them are already in there breath weapon fire for example was one i had to create 
for that gold dragon breath weapon. What's the chances you need that immediately? Quite small. So once I've got that done, another one of the settings that I needed to look at is was in um, CPR, so Chris's pre-maids, where it talks about the compendium options. Was it in that one? Additional compendiums. So Chris's pre-maids, Gambit's pre-maids, MIDI item community showcase, MISC is going to look in there. I also want it looking in my folder for CG automations. Now you can see that this is this is looking at for the higher priority. So what I can do if I want to is I can say, well, that's two, um, that's three, that's four. And actually, I want you to look in, if I can do it, I want you to look in my folder first because those are ones I've tried and tested. I know they definitely worked and I may have tweaked. Oh, okay. Something else that we want to do configuration wise, and this is purely because I'm moving from one game world to another and bringing that automation over, is I want to go to Spotlight OmniSearch uh, and configure compendiums. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of things, places it will search. I can choose to turn stuff off. What I want to make sure for me is that CG automation items I am searching in there when I'm using Spotlight OmniSearch. Because again, if I'm pulling out a torch, of course I can pull it straight from Chris, Chris's pre-maids. But I actually don't want to, uh, you know, yes, GPS, absolutely, CPR, absolutely, no problem. What I don't want to do is to accidentally be calling stuff from uh, the wrong folder and then the torch doesn't work. So I might say, hang on a minute, D&D 5th edition, don't search in there. Now, I'm not going to do that for now because, <laughs> because I haven't been through enough items. But eventually, I'll be in a point saying, don't use those at all. Only use the items I've checked and I'm happy with work the way I want them to. Oh, blimey. Right, okay. So what's left? After I've done all that, bought in my MIDI QLL settings. I've checked Chris. I've checked Gambit. I've got those bits sorted. I've made sure Spotlight OmniSearch is going to search the right place. I'm going to make sure Chris is going to pull in the right thing. Now I'm going to go to each character and I'm going to medkit them. So you can see this has got one Chris is pre-made already. It's going to update three. And it is defaulting to pull my versions from my compendium CG automated items. There comes that damage resistance, that breath weapon and hellish rebuke. Thank you very much. I will have them. Um, and we know that they work because I've tested them. So there it is in there, the working version. Uh, I'm just going to do that for each of these. There's seven available for this character. And again, Fae Ancestry, um, Arcane Recovery is pulling, all messages pulling from MIDI Item Showcase. Fine, it's an updated version. Um, it's not, it doesn't do much. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I'm going to check that one because I was sure. I, I did check message uh, and. Was there another option for it? Yeah, I would like to use my one, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> because um, that actually does work quite nicely. So it does a whisper message to other people. It's slightly strange. I'm sure I said do that, didn't I? Oh, it's not actually updating them from my one. How interesting. So that might be a slight little issue that we've got. So I might need to do these manually because I'm not pulling direct from Chris's or something. So I may need to go through and just double check some of these things and go, hang on a minute, are you actually using the correct version of this? Are you using my one? Yes, you are. Thank you. So I might need to do this slightly more manually because it's pulling for mine. Again, you're only going to do this once really, aren't you? Um, Eldritch Blast, which one are you using? Chris's, which is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> it works. I think mine's just a clone of Chris's anyway. Mage Hand, there isn't one. Uh, Hellish Rebuke, there is. Which one are we using? The one that I've checked. Good. Happy with that. So I'm just going to go through each of those. Um, it wasn't Unseen Servant. And just check that they all work and they are the my version of them. I didn't mean to do that, did I? Um, it's not on there, silly boy. It's this one here. I just want to make sure that, again, yes, yeah, so that is using my correct one. So not a problem. So that's all I'm going to do is step through these and make sure they're all working fine and dandy uh, with no dramas. Um, yeah. So if you want to use it, by all means, you can copy my MIDI QRL settings link in the description. You can copy 
um, and add on my module uh, for all of these things that I've been tried and tested. I will continue to update that um, as I come across stuff. But of course, my priority is making sure the things for my party are working the way that I want. Yeah, see that, ha that has updated. Uh, message we just checked. Ray of Frost. Okay, so it has updated them. So even using the med, med kit where it's saying, oh, there's six available and it's saying, oh, I've just updated Ray of Frost. It has updated them. It's just keeping them in the list. So that's fine. That is actually working. God, dear, that made me nervous. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go through each of these. I'm going to med kit them. Only one available. That's fine. That's that fighting initiate archery. Thank you very much. I've got the updated version. Um, this one's probably going to be a few because it's a uh, sorcerer. Seven available. There's all those spells, firebolt, mending, etc. Lovely. Thank you very much. Happy with that. Um, and it just means everything will, I know, everything will go nice and smoothly for this individual uh, character because I've tested it. Uh, so I want to check Goodberry is using the right one and Absorb Elements is using the right one because it seems to be pulling from the incorrect place there. I want to make sure... Yeah, can you pull from my one, please? Thank you very much. So, yeah, just be careful. A couple of them, it's kind of um, absor Absorb Elements, wasn't it? Yeah, please pull from my one, please, because I know that is the version that definitely works. So nice and easy. Just make sure that that did stick. Yes, it did. Good. All right. Anyway, so I just thought I would uh, show you that. And uh, obviously, my party is going to have a nice little surprise uh, come Tuesday in our next session where some of these things are going to work slightly nicer. Um, as you can probably see, they've made it to the second floor and they are literally about to start their very first combat with the animated armor. So that'll be a nice good test of the automations in reality um, and whether they feel that they've got too many clicks to do for combat and if they would like those automated a little bit more, but we're not going to go nuts. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.